Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. It's been a while. Today is the day that Netflix uh, releases She-Ra and the Princesses of Power Season 4 on Netflix. So to celebrate the occasion, I'm going to rip a little bit the rules of my channel where you usually, you know, you get to see fashion and perfumes and lifestyle and we're gonna we're gonna do an unboxing of, of She-Ra, of She-Ra dolls, of the new toy line that um, is hitting stores hopefully all over the world but for now in the States and I have to say I'm as skeptical as I was when the show first started uh, with season one um, it's growing on me. I'm really, really enjoying it. So let's celebrate Shira, the empowerment of happiness, of being able to be happy in your body, no matter what size or shape you have, to enjoy your pros and cons, embracing what is the good and the bad that is given to you and what you can work on in your life. To celebrate that and the launch of season four, we're going to do an unboxing. So for those of you, I mean, I've been a fan of Shira since I was a little kid, and I still am. So, for those of you who are also fans of Shira, uh, enjoy the ride. Let's do the unboxing. So, this is the first one is Force Captain Adora. So, it's, it's actually Princess Adora. Um, so, instead of Shira, Princess of Power, now we have Shira and the Princesses of Power. Sort of protection is included here. These are very big dolls. Mattel has um, changed a little bit the rules of the game in terms of sizes of She-Ra and we have more of a monster high type of look going on here. What is very fascinating to note, and we're going to get to the other dolls as well, they do vary in size and this is where I said, where, where I was talking about being comfortable in your own body. Uh, this show does depict different sorts of bodies and all of them are very comfortable in their own shape so yes to that and in terms of um, gender sexual orientation that is also an interesting topic uh, in particular with Scorpia but Scorpia unfortunately has not been made into a toy yet first Captain Adora soldier leader hero smart and courageous Adora is driven by her un wavering desire to stand up for what's right and to use her powers to overthrow the horde powers wields shape-shifting sword transforms into shira let's just rip into this i usually take a lot of care how i open boxes but for a video like this i think it's so cool because i know you know this is the thing a lot of people they wish to see unboxings, but if they purchase their toys, they wouldn't dare just rip into them like we did when we were kids. So I think it's great to have on camera an actual ripping open a box. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it just brings back really fond memories of childhood. However, if I am in a collector's mood for certain things, I, I would never open boxes like this. But for those of you who want to protect their boxes, but still wish to feel the flavor of, of ripping open the box as when you were kids you have this video now to enjoy that look how cool they actually have Shira in the plastic packaging here on the cover and then you have kind of the reminiscence of the sort of protection there also in the plastic and then on the side you have the sword you see it and as well on this side there has been also a Shira versus Shadow Weaver Comic Con exclusive. I did not get that. The paper cardboard in here is glued, and I see the glue there and there to the plastic, so we cannot take that off without completely damaging it. I'll try to do that later on. Now we get to the bad part of all of this, and the bad part of all of this is all the plastic bits. So I've prepared scissors. If there are any kids watching, don't do this alone. Do not use scissors on your own, especially these tiny ones. Let's cut our Shira, uh, well, Shira. Oops, I gave away her secret identity. Let's cut Adora free. It's like an operation. Okay, I think we have most, no. <laughs> Of course not. How do they bolt her head? Oh my god. 
This is turning into a horror movie. Her head has been perforated. Oh, it, oh, it really, okay. It really has been perforated. Oh, oh no, Shira. Princess Adora fainted. Okay, hair. Now, first issue I have, um, you're gonna do rooted hair with these dolls. Well, then give us a comb, give us a brush, give us something that we can work with because you need to be able to comb their hair. Quick look. The sword is very sturdy, translucent. There's no glitter. The Comic Con exclusive Shira with Shadow Weaver or versus Shadow Weaver had glitter in the sword. So the joint is very wobbly. How you doing? Here's a shout out to Wendy. How you doing? Okay. Yeah, that's not gonna work. So Adora is not really ready for the sword of protection. Mattel, you gotta create... Uh, these hands have to be a bit more sturdy. She can hold it like this. And then she's like, Yas, I am gonna get you. Okay, so nice little hair. We can't comb it. Can I take the boots off? Oh, this is threads everywhere. I'm gonna, let's cut this thread because, oh, okay, it's not, it was loose. They have joints at the knees, joints at the elbows, I think, too. No? Yeah. And she can swivel that head. Now, I have an issue with this plastic in her head, because you can't pull that out. The, the little bits that we cut all open, open, there you have them. I'm going to have to work my way in, or you got to just kind of push them into her head, I guess, because you can't pull them out. Oh, well. And that's Adora. Let's put her here. Her boot is very funny. It's a soft plastic. Big feet, Adora. Very big feet. Not judging, just statement. Can she stand though? Thanks to her big boots, she can stand. But let's lay her on the ground. So Adora, you wait here for the rest of your pals. Now moving on to the next character, which I adore, that is Glimmer. Let's open up Glimmer. Now I have seen a lot of Glimmers in um, Targets. And each one of them has a different hairstyle. Now, this hairstyle has nothing to really do with her <laughs> hair in the cartoon. She looks like um, a 50s or 60s kind of housewife getting ready to prepare, you know, a Stepford housewife to be precise. And every glimmer I've seen had a different hair done to her. This is the one that kind of seemed the neatest. Some of them are really busted. And I wonder how it's going to be when I take her out. Is it going to be soft or not? Uh, copyright for this one is Mattel 2018. Even though I haven't seen them in 2018 yet. Okay, opening up Glimmer. Now, Glimmer is the positive approach to body because she is... A little bit fuller. Now she's more full in the cartoon than she actually is as toy, but right off the bat, if we compare her leg here, thigh, to Adora, as you see that she's a bit bigger. She could be even bigger because I think she would be even more beautiful if they really, if Mattel actually created a bit bigger molds for her, for, for the body, just to give her even more um, a comfortable feel, I think. I mean, this is already bigger. Uh, than the Adora body, but uh, not as big as she is in the cartoon. She's super cute in the cartoon, by the way. A little bit too hysterical at times. I wish they would kind of make her a bit less moody. She feels a bit moody. Um, oh, this is going to be hard. Okay, let's go in there. Oh, her little 
frost action thingamajiggy just flew away but that's okay let's free glimmer oh no don't tell me we have again the head issue yeah we do uh, this thing really Mattel do you really need so much plastic how do kids you know what I mean like kids can't open this without damaging their dolls unless they don't use these crazy scissors not cool Mattel you gotta change that um, okay so what does she come from includes glitter blast okay so this is the glitter blast and she's a bit her joints are a bit more <laughs> stiff than Adora's oh my gosh though she is very sticky plasticky I mean you can imagine how kids the second they open this they pull her hair once all of these locks uh, are just gonna go undone and then I mean you can see already so you have to preserve her like you uh, I wonder how she's gonna look if, if 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 kids really play with her like how all of this is gonna open up and look you know in, a, in, a, in a literally five minutes after opening her and then I wonder also, where do we put this as a ring? Like that. Oh, aren't you fancy? Well, that's Glimmer. She has her little cape, which is kind of like a... Could, all, could be even better for Frost, actually. But anyway, so this is Glimmer's cape. She does have, reminiscent of 80s she a bit of glitter going on here on the dress. Her eyes do have a little twinkle in them, even though this is just printed. This is not by any means... Um, she doesn't have any crystals in her eyes and she is a little bit bigger than Adora definitely let's read about Glimmer she could also hold a sword I wonder if she's better at it than Adora is yeah she kinda is Glimmer holds the sword well done Glimmer well done but let's not torture you with the sword too much and let's read quickly what Glimmer has to say, or what Mattel has to say about Glimmer. Princess of Brightmoon, the headstrong leader of the Princess Alliance, Glimmer strives to be brave. She believes that love and the power of friendship can conquer any challenge. Powers, teleportation, sparkle energy blasts. Alrighty, that was Glimmer. Now let's move on to the guy of the situation. We have Bo. Bo is our man. Bo was also present in the original she cartoon in the 80s. All of these characters were depicted as more mature, older characters in the 80s. Now they are literally teenagers. Uh, Bo not being any exception to that. Particularly strange with Bo is... Um, his orientation, we don't really know. He just seems to be super happy, positive vibes, energy in the cartoon. But at the same time, we don't know. What does it say about Bo? Maybe Mattel gives us some information. Master archer and best friend. Super smart and charming. Bo is, a skilled, Bo is as skilled with a bow and arrow as he is with technology. He is driven by loyalty and honor, powers, master archer, inventor, and tech guru. I would think that he's not really a tech guru. Like, oh, look at the little hearts here. Oh, we're going to get to them when we unbox him um, under his boots. Um, Entrapped as more the tech guru, I would say. But guess him being the only guy doll we have at the moment they you know I don't know I guess they want to call the guy the tech guru and here we go again with the the gender roles you know like oh, okay so the guy's a tech guru yeah the girls are too thank you very much so here we go Shira princess of power bow okay I'm piling these up on top of each other as you can see because they have all the same shape all of these lids There you go, we got three of them piled up together. So, Bo, let's free you from your cage. From your crystal castle. Your, crystal, your plastic castle, more than crystal castle. 
And oh, let's not cut his belly. Alright. Okay, his head was free, so they didn't poke his head. That's cool. Um now th the thing to notice about Bo is Okay, the hair is he's losing hair. Jeez, you're a bit young to lose hair, but Interesting because I wanted to cut his hair a little bit anyway in the cartoon uh, We can see here The hair is more rounded at the tops so it doesn't open up like 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 it does here You see it goes like outwards. It's more rounded inwards, so I can definitely trim this down a little to um, Give him a more cartoon accurate look And there's more to cut here uh-oh, cutting in a dangerous area, Bo. Okay, you survived. Um, I'm gonna get all of these little... Oh, Mattel, you really... Huh? You love your plastic. Okay. Come on. There. Now, this is a very thin, and I would say borderline flimsy bow and arrow this could break very easily I see kids kind of breaking it he has more of a barb like a young Ken type of um, articulation here even though oh, he has underwear <laughs> just for who's interested <laughs> they're not naked underneath and really the proportions are completely off I mean his legs are super long I mean, these bodies have don't do not resemble really humans at all. But then again, Etheria. I mean, they're aliens. They live on another planet. Yeah, we can't really. This is a bit tricky with the bow and arrow. I would have to pose him. That will take some time. Let's just put that there. He can also yield the sword of protection. There you go. For the honor of Grayskull. Um, let's take his boot off. Oh, okay, so unlike the ladies, he has a joint here. I guess that's due to the fact that the foot is a bit bigger. Another joint there. We have the heart. There you have the heart at the bottom of the boot, super cute. And they're cut in the back so that you can actually put them on with ease. Um, now, let's check Glimmer quickly. No. As you can see, we cannot bend her there. Her little moon logo from Bright Moon. She is the princess of Bright Moon after all. Okay. Now... The only nemesis we get to see in this regularly released toy line, for now, at least, because Shadow Weaver was a Comic-Con exclusive, so I didn't get my hands on that. But the only frenemy is Catra. Catra being the most sought after at the moment. She was the hardest to hunt down, sold out almost everywhere. Very interesting looking doll. Two different eye colors, like many cats do have. Catra, friend turned villain. Catra and Adora were once best friends, but Catra felt betrayed when Adora joined the rebellion, and now she wants to defeat the princess's powers. Cunning feline reflexes. Now, for Catra, we have the same background as we do for the good characters. I mean, the artwork of the packaging, we don't have the Horde as we did in the 80s. I mean, for the she and Princess of Power collection, even Entrapta, Double Trouble, uh, they, and, and Catra, they all had the, the glittery kind of look to them, to the packaging. So this is not, this has not changed um, today in 2019, but uh, it would be interesting to see some sort of Horde logo connected to her since she is part of the Horde. Unfortunately, on the package, we have none of that. Even on, at the top, we still have Shira, and we have the Sword of Protection. At the bottom, it's just some 
plastic to finish it. She includes her battle staff, which is there. Let's rip the package open, and she is free. Free as a bee. Let me add this to our collect to our growing collection. I love piling up these things. This looks really cool with the many swords. Okay, let's cut her free. Katra has a tail, which is kind of creepy because the tail is supposed to be like growing out of her, not part of her uniform or costume. She's a feline. Okay, this is going to be difficult. She's literally bolted down. Oh boy. I know, okay, this is the mask, but how do we get her? Mm, Katra, Katra. You are one tough kitty. Oh man, Mattel. Like they really... Okay, let's... Look what they did here. Oh boy. Okay, here we go. And she's free from this plastic prison. However, her hair is a mess. Mattel, we need brushes or combs or something to go with these dolls because a cat takes care of its fur it's always on fleek as they say so i would not there's a little paint uh, nothing that we cannot fix little paint splatter there two different eye colors the mask is attached to her head. Now we could, I could cut this off and then the mask becomes detachable, but I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm just going to leave that on for now because I want to figure out how wobbly this mask really is after you detach it and will it, you know, will it stay on or will it, uh, fall off easily. Her ears are attached to her head. This is not one um, mold. The face head is one mold and then the ears are attached. And they do move slightly. I don't think that this is intentional. I just think that when uh, in the factory they click them in, uh, that you know, they're just not, not a completely perfect fit. But it's kind of interesting to see that they do have a little bit of movement there. Nothing that would change the look of the character or her mood. But anyway, interesting. So Catra um, also has no joints there, really. She can't bend or move or kind of wiggle her her feet, but she does have a joint at the knee, or two joints, one at each knee. The tail does turn, and it is kind of a standard monster high tail, I think, that is attached into her back. A bit creepy, but yeah, <laughs> that's what you get. So. Her skin tone is uh, yellowish, a kind of, you don't really see it on camera um, because there's a lot of uh, cold lights right now, so they do neutralize a little bit the yellow tones um, that we're filming, but in real life the hue is orange-yellow of her skin. Not very feline, well, maybe if you're thinking of a tiger that has a bit more of an orange fur hue. Uh, to it. Um, so if we were to compare her to, let's say, Adora's skin tone, you can see the difference. Which is interesting if we compare her to Glimmer, which is yet another skin tone, slightly darker than Adora's. Bo is even darker still. So you can see we have four different skin tones. Also very interesting, not just body shapes, but also different skin tones. Cool. Um, now, 
what did I want to do with her? Well, not much. She looks cool. I don't want to take the tail off. I know you can just pull it out, but let's just leave the tail. Ah, yes, I know what I wanted to do. I wanted to give her her staff, which we also have to free from its plastic prison. Okay. There it is. Quite simple, like a metallic dark silver color. You can see paint job is not the best. But oh well. Can she hold it without losing it? She kind of can. It's a loose fit though. But she can. It would fall out, I think. So if, if we were to, you know, we can pose her. We definitely, I'm giving her a Greek pose here. Now we have the main character, the one that keeps it and holds it all together, and that is She-Ra. She-Ra is huge. She is much taller than the other characters you're going to see when we unbox her, and she's much heavier than the others. There's a lot more plastic used here. Price is the same, however. Let's see what it says. Adora discovers her powerful destiny when a magical sword transforms her into the warrior princess Shira. She then leads the rebellion to fight the evil horde and protect her home planet Etheria. Shira, mythical warrior princess, when Adora raises the sword of protection and pledges to fight for the honor of Grayskull, she is transformed into the princess of power Shira. Her powers, super strength, shape-shifting sword, healing powers, mystical connections to the magic of the planet. Yes, let me just double check. Okay, so this part of the text is the same for every one of our dolls. The bottom text and changes according to the character. Let's open her up. Now, the difference between this Shira and the Comic Con exclusive Shira versus Shadow Weaver is that that one, as I said, as I mentioned before, has glitter in the sword, and not just that, the cape. It's a bigger red cape that goes all the way to the bottom with a different material used. She's heavy. You can see already how she fills up the entire space of this cardboard. Next to Adora, she she's much bigger, taller. And Adora is Shira. Spoiler alert. Okay. There's a lot to do when we free her because there's a lot of bits to cut loose. And I don't want to damage anything. And of course, same issue with her head. This is so silly, Mattel. Why do you do this? Like kids are gonna end up cutting, you know, off the hair. And so two is not enough. There's a third one. Come on. I mean, I think sometimes Yeah, they really exaggerate. Even her cape has extra... Ugh. You know, Mattel, if, if you were so precise with your quality control of your paint jobs as you are with attaching these dolls to their boxes, you know, then I wouldn't complain as much. A little shade there, but it has to be said. Pain job isn't always the best. Okay, the sword is attached to her legs. Let's free her from that. Here we go. She, I mean, she's very sturdy, very big. She has a bit of um. The the haircut has a kind of its scale to. For Shira standards, I guess it's a wavy beach look. The Sword of Protection uh, 
from the Shira box is basically the same as Adora's. <clears throat> it's not a bigger sword, it doesn't have anything different from Adora's sword. It's exactly the same mold, same plastics used, same colorway. She's just bigger. So the crown is attached, again, same reasons as Catra. I'm not going to cut all the crown bits off. I don't want to lose the crown just yet. We're just going to leave it on there. She has beautiful blue eyes. A little bit less green than Adora's. And as you can see, hers is a bit more saturated. Her eye color is a little bit more ethereal, if you may. Haha. -ha. Since we are in Etheria anyway. Can she hold that magic sword of protection better than Adora can? Let's see. Probably not. I mean, the hand is bigger, and it's a stiffer plastic than the one used for Adora's hand. Yeah, she's a bit more... She can hold aloft her magic sword of protection. Let's see the back of her feet. Do they have a joint there at the bottom? No. Just at the knee. But I think it's a very sturdy toy. I think kids are going to enjoy it because I, you know, I'm thinking, you know, when, when I was a kid, had I had a Shira this big, it would have been really cool. I would have loved it. My Shira was like tiny compared to this one, but this is, this is Shira the Vendetta. It's amazing. So there you have it, guys. These would be the first five toys released by Mattel. Oh, wait, not true. There is one more surprise. Another Shira. Yes, a third one. Well, I mean, Adora Shira. Comic-Con Shira, so this is the fourth one. We're gonna also unbox this majestic package here, Shira with Swift Wind. However, before we do that, let's just check the artwork. This is the first time we encounter on the new Shira series um, more characters drawn. Maybe, you know, it's just telling us for the future that these toys might also be coming out, but we do have the Rebellion, or the Etheria Fighters, or the Princesses, not just Princesses, Bo is there too, but he could be a Princess too, you never know. Um, so we got the good ones on this side, including Swift Wind, and then, and this is the more important and interesting side to me, we have the Horde on this side of the packaging. And now, I'm surprised that they chose to I mean, this is great artwork, by the way, but I'm surprised that they chose to not just put them on the side, on the thinnest side of this packaging, but also they didn't give them an entire side. They, like, shrunk them only to two-thirds of, of, or three-fourths of, um, of all the space that they had that they could have used up to portray these characters. I mean, we have Catra, we have Scorpia, we have Entrapta, we have Shadow Weaver, and Hordak with the Horde Insignia logo on him. I wonder if Hordak will ever be made as a toy from this particular series. If yes, uh, put me down for a couple of them. I want doubles. I want one <laughs> in box and also to unbox. So yeah, strange that they kind of list all these other characters only in this way. Still, I'm happy they did. They could have completely avoided doing it. This is how Swiftwind looks in the cartoon, quite different from what we get from the toy, which we're going to see in a minute. Swiftwind, Shira's loyal steed. Swiftwind was a regular horse before <laughs> a regular horse before Shira's sword turned him into a majestic alicorn. Now he's an important ally with a strong sense of justice, powers, flight, speed, psychic connection with Shira. And then we have again Shira here. Uh, same text as before, I guess. Mythical warrior princess, when Adora raises the sword of protection and pledges to fight for the honor of Grayskull, she is transformed into the princess of power, Shira. Powers, super strength, sa uh, shape-shifting sword, healing powers, mystical connections to the magic of the planet of Etheria. And then you have the other characters that you can 
collect, which we have just unboxed now. The bottom of the box shows the swift wind and how to connect the wings because there will be a feature how to how to use swift wind. Now I don't want to damage this artwork on the sides, but you have to open it up here in order to access the toy. So well I'm not gonna I'm not gonna damage the hoard. We're gonna damage <laughs> princesses. I'm so sorry ladies and gents, but uh, that's what it's gonna be. We're gonna rip into this. We're gonna unbox it old school style. There you go. I hope I can just pull out Yeah, okay, good. It's not extra glued inside, so we can just pull out Shira and Swiftwind. And now we're gonna have to do a lot of cutting. Hopefully, not too much cutting, but I foresee a lot of cutting. This seems more complicated than expected. Unboxing these toys is no fun for kids, I think, because, I mean... Well, let's just get it on as quick as possible. Here is the third sort of protection. Again, no glitter. This is the same version as we have with Adora's and Shira's sword. That's a pity because we have battle armor Shira here and we remember battle armor from battle armor Skeletor and battle armor He-Man. Okay. Her head is attached to the back again. Okay, the wings are not free, but she is free. Partially free. Okay, we're gonna have to fix her hair. So, I will have to take uh, the crown off. I'm gonna have to cut all of these bits that are attaching her crown to her forehead because Yeah, the hair is messy. Anyway, before we get to that, interesting to note what Mattel did here with Shira. Hmm. Battle armor Shira. So, usually, you know, out of experience, I can tell you when Matt. Yeah, this is going to break. You can see these joints, when they use these golden plastic uh, materials, they're usually very, very brittle and they can break very easily. So instead of giving her these gauntlets or whatever they are, extra added pieces, they actually made her arms out of that material not very bendy. And I am super scared to break it. Yeah, this is not moving. This joint is not moving at all. So, hmm, not the best. Loving the glitter of her little dress. She has her <laughs> coat on the back and I guess you can just pop off the armor. Or not. Is it glued on? Okay, you cannot pop it off. It's glued on. Her armor, her frontal armor, shield, um, or chest plate is glued on. You cannot take it off. You can take off her dress. She... nothing. They're just white. It's, it's as if she has like a white bodysuit running all over her. The skirt, very simple. This pearlescent white plastic used for like the bodysuit. Oh boy. 
<laughs> Shira pooped herself. This is gold. Uh, we can take this off. Yeah, it's it's literally the gold of the plastic used for the rest of her outfit. She's completely pearlescent white all over. We have no joint there. The knee, however, bends. These uh, boots are much simpler than the regular Shira. It's the same mold, but just one gold color running through the entire boot as opposed to the three colorway boots on the Shira release. So you have a full on gold and a three color version. Huh, that's our Shira. I'm gonna try to warm this up a little and bend it. But for now, let's check out also Swift Wind and the Okay, so how they <laughs> keep the hair connected. Ah, gosh, we're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to cut this and then pull it open. Like that. Take the rubber off. Okay, so Swiftwind has a very strange <laughs> growth uh, growing out of his back. So this is to hold Shira in place. Does it look good? Absolutely not. We don't need something growing out of the back of the horse. But... Yeah, and it doesn't really even work very well. It's all very flimsy. I think with Swiftwind, they really... could have done a better job. Especially with this plastic bit coming out of his back because you can't take that off Also, it's just one color running through the entire body Here we have the unicorn bit, which is another piece of plastic attached. You cannot detach it The eyes are similar to the TV show But we're also not quite there and then we have the flowy salmony RNG kind of hair. The wings, once they're attached, you can't detach them and again, I'm going to have to cut into these. Oh, this one being the most dangerous to free from the prison. Okay. This is not real glitter, it's just a photo of glitter enhanced through Photoshop to make it look like it's sparkly. But the outside of the wing looks like this. It still has the plastic bits and the holes that the plastic bits cause when it's attached. And it has a a plastic like bone structure in there which follows the shape of the wing all the way around to here also super delicate and I would add flimsy so and then you have these little bits once you lock it into swift wind you can't take them off anymore it's like a one direction thing there, one is in, and we're going to put the other one in as well. And, and that's it, basically. Um, I don't think that there's a function. Let me double check. I don't think there's a flap, wing flapping function. No. 
wing flapping action. Uh, uh, okay, but <laughs> this is how they portray the wing flapping action. Literally, it's a kid just moving the horse up and down quickly and the wings flap. Wow. What an action feature, you guys. What an action feature. Mattel could have done a bit more there. Like, literally. Unless there's... No, there's nothing to push or pull. There's no mechanism in there. It's just literally this. Well, that's that, you guys. That's the unboxing of all the She-Ra dolls. Minus Shadow Weaver exclusive Comic-Con. I'm going to put these, I'm going to put them in a little position for the last shot so we get a little bit more, uh, a better view of them rather than just them laying comatose on the carpet. So here they are, all aligned, my final verdict. I mean, it's complicated to judge these in a way, having in mind the old school she -Ras. But also it's difficult because as you can see here, we have three Shiras or two Shiras, one Adora, Bo, Catra, and Glimmer. So it's kind of hard to play with them because you got the same character three times and then you have three other characters. So, you know, it's either um, Adora and Shira is out of the equation if you really want to, I don't know, work... Uh, the scenario properly in terms of what characters can be doubled or not. And then you have a scene with Bo, Catra, um, Swiftwind. Okay, Swiftwind is a character as well. So you could say there's four characters plus She-Ra, right? You got Bo, Catra, Swiftwind, and Glimmer. And then you got your, in this case, uh, you have your uh, battle armor She-Ra. So they're either playing out a battle scene. As you can see here, Bo is trying to stop Catra. Catra is like, trying to stop Swiftwind. Uh, Shira is posing and, well, Glimmer is just kind of trying to um, glitterify Catra. It's not really working out very well in their favor as of now, but who knows. And then you got these two little uh, ladies and uh, they just don't fit in because when Shira is Shira, she can't be a Dora, and if Shira is the battle armor Shira, she can't be the regular Shira. So you gotta pick which one of these two you want in your battle scene, unless you just let your imagination one run wild and say, well, sh the battle armor Shira has a twin sister Shira who has a smaller, like Barbie has Skipper, Shira has a Dora as a cousin. In that case, you could you could kind of create a scene with uh, six humanoid characters plus Swiftwind. Yeah, that that's that. In terms of uh, posability, I mean, Adora literally has to hold her sword because otherwise it's going to fall out. That joint is just not working. Uh, the sword is too heavy for her. However, she does have the best outfit in terms of uh, all of the different materials used. To create this look, the jacket is very well done. Shira is okay. There's quite a few paint flaws with all of them. Um, Bo has issues with his pants. They're not stretchy at all. So to bend him in the position that I bent him is very risky. It could tear or rip the pants. Katra is very flexible. Pity, though, that she doesn't have a joint at the bottom there, so she cannot bend her uh, feet. It's kind of tricky to pose her. The, the hair is terrible. I mean, it's literally bad. I mean, look in the cartoon, it's really fluffy and big, and what Mattel offers us here is just a couple of threads of, of hair. You gotta reroute her hair if you want to, you know, if you want to have something that really looks like Catra Catra. So, you could get a professional rerouter to do it for you. You know, they could have done something like they did with Glimmer. Here, I mean, she, you know, it. she has hair. Let's just put it that way. Glimmer has hair. Doesn't want to focus on it, but it's there. Let me take her out of this battle scene. Like, this is a hairdo. You know what I mean? So, but still, it, it's not really Glimmer from the cartoon at all. Anyway, let's put her back there with Swiftwind. 
Battle armor Shira is a mess. These gold parts of the arm, they're just so brittle. One is tearing already there at the joint. So this is really, either you leave them boxed, like in their original boxes, and that's like they look the coolest that way because you know, they've been placed like that in the factory and they have their position, their poses, the hair is tied up and I don't know, they have some sort of dynamic pose more or less except for bow. And that's it if you're a collector. But if you're a child and you want to play with these toys, uh, they're going to look a mess within like half a second after you've unboxed them, especially if you take Shira's crown off. Now this one still has the crown on bolted in as I as I like to say with all the plastic bits this one I had to take off to kind of fix her hair a little bit so you can see this crown is literally just resting on her head and it just pops open every like every time you move her if you really want the, the crown to stick on her head and not fall off you have to push it down here but we all know that <laughs> she, she I mean yeah you know what I mean? Shira is not gonna... It doesn't look that elegant, does it? Or you could... No, you can't even put it upside down like you could with... Uh, you Technically you could. Now she looks like an elf from Lord of the Rings. Let's see if that even works. No, it doesn't really work. There, you could do that. And then it stays. Then, then, then it stays, but then you don't have her little pointy ears. I find this quite interesting though. Why not? I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of digging uh, the, this look for her. That's kind of okay. Interesting. They didn't do that in the cartoon though. Well, not yet. Not that I know of. And then you have this version. That has all that plastic showing everywhere. So there's that. Bo's hair isn't really like it is in the cartoon. So there's a little bit of trimming that has to be done there. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, the most interesting hair is Glimmers, but it's the least cartoon accurate. That's, I mean, we can definitely all agree on that. So yeah, that's our battle scene. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me zoom it out a little bit for you. There you go. You can even go more down with the camera and... <laughs> the fact that none of these toys comes with a comb or a brush means that uh, they will be quite well unbrushed you know messy this is just pulling Adora out of the box she's already all messed up the crown that is as I say bolted to her head Shira's head it the hair will come loose up there and then you're gonna have to comb her somehow but then you're gonna have to take the crown off but there's no comb to comb her you know in this case, I took uh, the crown off to kind of pull the hair down, but I didn't use any brush. And also the way, I mean, Catra is a mess. Her hair is just not cool at all. And the way that they cut the hair, you have like strands that are longer and that are shorter. It's just really, they need better quality control and they need better quality for their hair, especially if they're, paying so much attention to attaching these figures to the box with like 300 pieces of plastic. If you're going to be meticulous about that, Mattel, then be meticulous also about the quality of, of the actual hair, which is also just strands of plastic after all. And there you have it, guys. That's our setup. I hope you like this video. If you have, please do thumb it up. And I wish you all really fun Shira Princess of Power times. If you haven't already, but wish to consider subscribing to my channel here on YouTube, I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, Super Deco Ball spelled together. I am also on Patreon, and thank you to all my patrons who have pledged. Uh, you can see special footage there, videos that do not come to YouTube, but also exclusive previews. That's that, guys. For the honor of Grayskull, never give up on love. I'll see you again soon in my next video. Bye.